Thing. Here we go. Oh, do we have that on? Because that's going to be a lot of... Uh, it's, on it's, it's on all the time. Can't hear it. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, are we good? We got a connection? How's it look? How's the audio? How's the audio coming out? Okay, great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Joan Brown of the Floor Tender Forum. I'm here live with Grind All 61, Gary Galeno from the Grind All 61 YouTube channel. This man has hit the mother load of information on 5G, folks. He has enough information here to make your head spin on the topic that all of us have to deal with. We don't have a choice. We've got to face the ramifications of what this technology brings, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, before we go into any further discussion on this agenda, I want to make sure that we have, number one, we have the right people in the room. I want to read a quote from America's God and Country. I'm just going to open this randomly here. Daniel Webster. Okay, let's read from him. You know who Daniel Webster is? He's the guy that wrote the dictionaries that back when school used to teach us how to think, this is a dictionary they used to refer to, folks. When my eyes shall be turned to behold for the last time the sun in heaven, May I not see him shining on the broken and dishonored fragments of a once glorious union, on states dissevered, discordant, belligerent, and a land rent with civil feuds or drenched, it may be fraternal blood. Behold the gorgeous ensign of the republic now known honored throughout the earth, still full high advanced, its arms and trophies streaming in their original luster, not a stripe erased or polluted, not a single star obscured. It does not bear the motto, liberty first and union afterwards, but everywhere spread all over its characteristics of living light, blazing on all its ample folds as they float over the sea and over land and in every wind under the whole heavens. That other sentiment dear to every true American, heart, liberty, and union now and forever, one and inseparable. Ladies and gentlemen, these words came from Daniel Webster in 1830. I read them fast because there's a lot, but that's back when the time when the country was sawed in half by a buzzsaw, folks, over the Civil War. And the, the battles ranges. We're in that place now, but what's going on against the backdrop of this supposed civil war in the United States that they're trying to foment in the media is a deployment of a technology so evil and so wicked and so sinister and so dangerous that people have no clue. And it's being sold to us as the neatest things since sliced bread and the biggest necessity since running water and electricity. We need to go into prayer right now, folks. And I want to welcome all of you to the Fullerton Informer tonight. And uh, like I said, we got to have the right people in the room. Let's bow our heads real quick. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you as sinful people, but we come before you as redeemed people. And we come before you in need of courage and wisdom and strength and unity amongst ourselves, Father. Would you please grant us the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the wisdom to understand, and the depths and the breadths of knowledge to make sense of the information that we're about to disseminate. And may you place a hedge of protection around us and our families as we plow through these fields of turmoil and evil in the days ahead, Lord. The days are dark ahead, but the, the brightness continues to shine in the horizon. And we hold true to the promises that your son, Jesus Christ, gave us. That if he who is in us shall not overcome us because he has already overcome the world. May we not give our bodies and our minds over to the works of darkness, but seeking truth, justice, and righteousness for all of God's people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Gary, go right ahead, buddy. This is uh, Rindall61. He's hit the jackpot on information on 5G. Go right ahead, Gary, please. All right. So I just want to give a brief uh, <clears throat> overview as to what all this is and why it's important. So uh, if you guys have been watching my videos for the last few years, I've spent a lot of time talking about Agenda 21. Agenda 21, the purpose is to herd all of humanity into these big mega cities. Uh, you know, and the way they do that is through zoning and by forcing you off your land. Uh, and the, the mega cities themselves. And weather warfare, burning. Yeah, all of that. Causing urbanization through weather warfare and staged fires. Uh, and these mega cities, uh, they, they are, are what are referred to as smart cities where everything is connected to the Internet. And so the way I describe it, and you actually helped me develop this is Agenda 21 is the blueprint for how they build the prison, and 5G is how they power the electric chairs. And so what they are doing is they're bringing out 5G, which is the new cellular network. They're also bringing out the new wireless system, YGIG, 
and those things are going to uh, power the new artificial intelligence that is coming. I'm sure a lot of you hear that term in commercials a lot right now. Every time I put on the TV, there's a commercial talking about artificial intelligence. The artificial intelligence is essentially God on earth. It's going to transcend government and you know corporations and everything. They, they're essentially unleashing Skynet on us. And when I say God on earth, I'm, I mean that literally the AI system is going to know everything about you, where you're going, where you're at. There will be no hiding from it. And then once they have the AI system in, the AI system will control the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is the smart city apparatus where all, all devices are connected to the Internet from your car to the street lights, to the trash can outside, to your toaster to your thermostat, to your doorbells. They want every single device on the internet. They want to have it to where you, they want you to change out everything in your house to a device with a USB port so that that device can be plugged in, charged up, hooked up to Wi-Fi. And we all know if it's hooked up to Wi-Fi, it's able to spy on you. So that is a system that is being unleashed upon humanity. And uh, what I learned through these documents that we're going to be talking about and I don't know if you knew this already, uh, but they talk about how the United States has begun the rollout in 2018. That's this year. They've begun the rollout. They tell us that the new cell phones are coming out in 2019. I have reason to believe that's going to be quarter two of 2019, which is April through June. Uh, and I say that because in one of these articles here, AT&T talks about uh, things that are coming out in the second quarter that they're going to be releasing in regards to this 5G cellular network. So the, the phones are right around the corner. Uh, more than likely, uh, maybe not this Christmas, but the following Christmas, it'll be the hottest new Christmas toy, Christmas gadgets. Get in line for Black Friday for your 5G equipment. And uh, that's just that's just the, the one half of it. I like to cover the whole Internet of Things, artificial intelligence. To me, that's how I get people to understand it because I tell people, look, do you want to live in a world where – AI is going to know your DNA and they're going to know when you're going to get sick before you get before you even know it. It actually says that in here that they are going to know when you are going to get sick before it even happens. And that's why I say this is unleashing God on earth. And we know that the God of the earth is the devil. They are actually uh what's the word? Um they're basically, you know, when they do like these weird spells on TV with the all the the weird witchcraft where they're basically like they're they're trying to well, why can't i think of it incantations you, well it's like when you open a portal like they're they're trying to um uh they're tr oh, i know it's, they're trying to manifest the actual devil mm -hmm. and and they're going to physically manifest it through mm -hmm. the through, they're going to yeah manifest it through the artificial intelligence and so i tell people do you really want to live in that world where this system that's not going to be under any human control. Government will not be able to keep this under control because once they set it loose, it's going to have a mind of its own and it's going to control everything. And if you've ever heard of something called Google, Google is the AI system for the planet. It's already been unleashed on us. Once they put in the 5G, they're going to allow it to expand across everywhere. It, it, not just like right now it's in our homes through our computers. It's going to be outside as well, and I've even heard the Google uh, CEO or chairman, I don't know what his title is, Eric Schmidt has actually said a few years ago that he wants outside to be like the Internet. He, he said that. So that's one component of all of this. The other component that Joe talks about a lot is the health component, and that is that this is they're utilizing millimeter, millimeter wave technology which has been tested out, which is a military weapon, if I'm not mistaken. That's what they use in the Iraq war, right? On the uh, on the opponents, on the enemy was the millimeter waves, the whole sound uh, yep. sound weapons and all that. And so they're bringing it home. They made them hear voices and put their hands up, and they just gave yeah, up. Yeah, they're, they're, they're bringing Burn their skin, all kinds of stuff. The weapons used in, in uh, Iraq are going to be, are coming home to us, and it's going to be used, uh, you know, for what they say, for these, this new technology, for higher internet speed. And so I mentioned that because our government basically brags that they're not going to test this on human health. And we already know that the regular wireless, that the, the, the 4G, 
Where do you know that that is harmful to human health? Well, they're putting this stuff on steroids and they're releasing it to the public starting 2019. The rollout began on 2018 and they're doing so without testing any of it. And so recently, uh, a very uh, special individual uh, dumped off all these documents to me and this stuff is brand new. I mean, these are data September 13th, September 14th. This is the most current information, at least as of right now, that you're ever going to hear about this. So uh, I guess I'll just start with one of these articles. Uh, some of these are very important. Uh, this is more important to me just because this is what I focus on. So we have the GSMA uh, Director General. His name is Matt Grainard right here. And it says, uh, GSMA head hails era of intelligent connectivity. I'm going to read this first paragraph. It says, GSMA Director General Matt Grainer put the focus on mobile's role in shaping every aspect of today's world in its opening keynote with an emphasis on the idea of intelligent connectivity. As an industry, we have an opportunity, an obligation to leverage our mobile networks and services to help achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, mm -hmm. that is Agenda 2030. 30. And very briefly before you, because uh, the reason why I made that first video showing all the stuff on my couch, I was trying to get your attention. I wanted you to see that video and call me and say, we got to talk about this. So that, that, that's the only reason why I even made that video. So And here we are, folks, because it happened. So Agenda 21 that we all, if people get these things confused, and I want to just clarify before we get into what I want. Well, I made that video because I want to hear what your take is on all this stuff. And Because once I stop, I want to hear you for the most of the rest of the night. So Agenda 21 is the United Nations International Program to Fight Climate Change, and they do so by implementing sustainable development. And that is implemented at the local level through your city council. It's very important that you know this difference. So Agenda 21 is done locally. Agenda 2030 is done nationally and internationally. So if the U.S. Congress started passing laws one day, if the U.S. Congress started passing laws one day, implementing sustainable development, that would be Agenda 2030. So this guy said that we have an obligation to use the mobile networks 5G to help achieve the U.N. Sustainable Development Goals, Agenda 2030. So they are claiming that 5G is going to be responsible for ushering in Agenda 2030 United Nations program. Well, Gary, how do you think they're going to use this technology to do that? I mean, you've already hit on it. They're well, going to track and trace everything, right? So gonna... the first thing is uh, there are 17 goals to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And, and what, tell the audience what some of those one, are. One of those goals is they want to implement a worldwide identification card. Thanks, Donald Trump, by the way. And, uh, yeah, so the United States, we have Real ID, which is the national ID card. Thanks, Donald Trump. It was passed in 2005, signed by George W. Bush. Uh, Barack Obama tried to implement it, was not able to do so. Uh, President Trump made it as a priority of his administration to carry out the real ID, uh, full compliance by 2020. If you go to any DMV in America, you're going to see a big poster board says, get your real ID. So, yes, I don't care who signed the original bill. The fact is he could have said, well, we're not making this a priority. And it could have been just like under Obama where it didn't happen and it can continue not happening. But he said that we have to do this for terrorism. And so if you want to talk about a worldwide ID, I don't know how, well, I shouldn't say I don't know, but, uh, you know, a souped up uh, 5G wireless system sounds perfect to uh, carry out a worldwide ID program. And if we have wireless everywhere and, and, and outside is like the Internet, more than likely what they're going to end up doing, and if you saw the movie Idiocracy, this happens, uh, if you're not carrying your world ID on your person, the scanners from either the streetlights or from wherever, this is the Internet of Things, it'll probably know that you're not carrying it, and they'll probably send some police officers, to, or no, not police officers, they're going to send robots after you. Because once this all goes through, they're going to unleash the robots. Yeah. And that and that's really what they're doing with the AI. The AI is going to control the robots. And if you don't believe me, go on YouTube, look up Boston Dynamics. You can look at all the robots that they have. And that's a scary video that, you that, did that, on that, that, they're, that they're building up. They made a TV show called Black Mirror where one of the Boston Dynamics robots 
goes around killing people with the actual robot. And so all these people that talk make America great again, the economy is on fire. Well, if Donald Trump is in office till 2024, all of this will come to fruition. And by 2024, we're going to lose most jobs in America to automation, automation and robotics. And outsourcing. And so this system is being put in so that humanity is replaced by robotics. And so, yes, if you don't have your world ID on your person, they're probably going to send some robot after you to come enforce the new worldwide law of carrying your world ID. That's just one goal of Agenda 2030. Another goal is they claim they want to eradicate all poverty in the world. There will always be poor people in this world, whether you like it or not. I want to stop you right there real quick. Jesus Christ said that the poor you will have with you always. Go ahead. Well, how do you how do you eradicate poverty? You do so by eradicating poor people. You get rid of the poor people. They also talk about they want to reduce all food waste by 50% worldwide. The only way you're going to reduce food waste is if you eliminate food. If there's not as many people, then you don't have as much food. And we talked about this last week. They want us eating bugs, grasshoppers, crickets, and those things will not create food waste. Uh, there's also a feminist component to all of this. They actually talk about in Agenda 2030 uh, to empower women by having less children. They actually say that having less children will empower women. And uh, there's a bunch of other things that I can't think of right now. But, uh, yes, they want to implement Agenda 2030 with the 5G. So uh, I want to hear your thoughts on that. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, I like to go to Goodwill, spend a few bucks, Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. This is a device where electrical current is run through a wire, in this case, 9 volts, and it electrifies the gas inside here and creates a plasma. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 60 gigahertz is the absorption spectrum of oxygen molecules. 60 gigahertz is the frequency that is going to be used in the short distance backhaul in the cities, in the mega regions. They're going to use this for wide gig and for point to point short distance transmissions because it can carry tremendous amounts of data. As Gary said, they're going to track and trace into everything. Lucifer fell from heaven and he took a third of the angels with him He's trapped here with us. And his goal, besides from trying to get everybody, including Jesus Christ, to bow down and worship him, <laughs> Jesus said, get lost, pal. He wants to be God. He couldn't be God up there, so he wants to be God down here. 5G, I want to tell you something, is a part of his desire to be omniscient so he can know everything about everybody at all times. That's right. And omnipotent, having control over the masses. Guess what, folks? It will never happen. Because the power of Jesus Christ and the power in us is not going to let that happen. So all these technocrats, all these satanic technocrats with their evil inventions are not going to succeed, ladies and gentlemen. Because guess what? People are waking up to this stuff. And guess what's really cool about this whole agenda? The problem with the 5G and these millimeter wave systems is that the signals don't travel very far. So they got to put these things really up close to you and your homes and your families. And that means that not only are they within sight, but they're within reach. Do you hear what I just said, folks? If they're going to put weapons all over the place and you can see the weapons and you can access the weapons, and you make your decisions accordingly. Now, we got a situation on our hands where we got uh, the Jerry Springer show and General Hospital running in the White House because every day the news is just full of these gory and explicit details of all these Trump shenanigans, while what Gary just described is hell on earth coming at us, folks. This stuff's moving fast. I mean, these th this convention, these people mean business. There's huge money involved in this stuff. There are entire industries that have sprung up. There's a lot of people making a lot of money off of this new wave of the future, as they call it. Ladies and gentlemen, this stuff's being rolled out, not because we need it for these, because guess what? I'm going to tell you something right now. The fact that the 5G systems are coming before the devices are here tells you everything you need to know. And that is 
that the 5G systems have nothing to do with the devices that we're going to have access to. It has everything to do with the weapons grid that they want to set up and the devices that they want us to bring into our homes. And you need to say no. And this is a plug to Goodwill and to thrift stores. You need to buy hardwired phones and old appliances that don't have computer chips and Wi-Fi in them. Unless you want your toaster listening to you in your bedroom. Unless you want your TV set watching you in the bathroom. Unless you want your can opener communicating with the radio in your automobile. They are going to know everything about you, everything you do, everything you say, everything you, everybody you talk to, every word you say, every move you make. I'll be watching you just like Stank from the police. Ladies and gentlemen, I could show you stuff right here from these current trade show publications. I, I don't know if you're into music, folks, uh, as any teenager was, I was. You know, when I look back at some of these pictures, and I look back at the album sleeves for some of the, the groups from the 1980s, like Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, and you see the Tesla Girls album cover where it's a coil of wire surrounding a girl's lips resembling a vaginal orifice, indicating the electromagnetic field induced by the coming systems. That will sterilize the girls. I mean, I, you can look at an OMD uh, album sleeve, and you can see the computer chip in it. Uh, the, the 5G, uh, look, I, I don't want to go into this right now, but all I'm telling you is that the devil's trying to make himself God. And he's a loser. He's a liar. He's a thief and a murderer. And the lake of fire is where you're spending eternity, pal. So give it up and quit trying to take everybody with you because we're not going to the Hotel California. You're trying to roll out the red carpet for it. We're not falling for it because Jesus told us he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. And no man comes to the Father but through him. So we're not going to follow this slime ball down that, rust, that, that rocky road. And all these devices that are being set up everywhere, you don't have to bring them into your house. You don't have to bring YGIG into your house. You don't have to buy one of these phones. You can shut off your Wi-Fi. You can hardwire stuff. You can put in firewalls. You can put in privacy settings. You can go back to an old TV set that doesn't interconnect to everything. You know what? You can get out of the cities. You can shut off all these LED lights. There's a lot of things you could do. They're spying on you with the lights. All this stuff's going to be connected through the Internet of Things. So they can know everything about you everywhere you go. And guess what's the worst thing of all, folks? This stuff is deadly to human life and to nature because these things are dropping like flies, folks. The bees are dying. The dragonflies are dying. This is what kills mosquitoes. Okay, Dragonflies eat mosquitoes. They're dying. They're not around anymore. Every year I've lived in this house, they used to be hanging out at my pool, making drops over the pool because they thought they were at some pond trying to get some bugs or some fish larvae or whatever. They're gone. Dragonflies are gone. We've got 80s Egypti mosquitoes here. They can weaponize the mosquitoes. They can make nanotechnology in the mosquitoes. They can run weaponized mosquitoes with this technology. They can make nanotechnology and the vaccines and the food. They can activate it with wireless frequencies. The application of this stuff is being sold to us as a bill of goods. And I'm going to turn this over to you in a second. They want us to believe that this installation has to come now. It needs to come immediately. We're going to miss this big curve, the big wave, if we don't put it in right away. And we need it so bad because, hey, we got to have faster downloads and faster uh, communication and faster... I stream on the way to work, and the communication speeds are just fine, folks. This is a con job. This is a setup. This is a kill grid, and it's satanic at its core. And we're going to go over some of the players, and we're going to go over some of the agendas here. They're using the absorption spectrum of oxygen. Don't mess with that. When you, when you mess with the absorption spectrum of oxygen, you know what happens, ladies and gentlemen? I just took a deep breath right now. All right, look, I'm going to tell you something right now, and I this makes me very upset, but I got to remain calm, and I got to explain something to you. When you mess with the orbital spin properties of diatomic oxygen molecules, when you mess with the spatial arrangement of the valence electrons of diatomic oxygen, which this stuff does, and uh, I, I can tell you right now, how do I know all this? Well... Forget the fact that I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry and I have a bachelor's degree in biological science. Guess what, folks? I've become an expert on magnetobiology because you know why? I threw the hundred bucks down and bought this book and I've studied this thing and read it from cover to cover. And I've done the equations. I've been through all the math. I know what this stuff does. And this was never taught to me at the University of California, Irvine, for the five years that I spent there studying biology, chemistry, biochemistry, psychobiology, physical biology, nuclear biology. I mean... I, look, I, one of these is I'll show you my transcripts. They never taught us. They taught us everything about organic materials and petrochemicals reacting with cells and living tissues. But you know what? 
They never taught us about radio frequency signals and their effect on living things. You know why they don't want you to know about this? This is an agenda, ladies and gentlemen. No school in the United States of America has this textbook in its curriculum. That should tell you something. Now, I'm sorry, Gary. No, no, go they, ahead. They kicked this book out back when they blew Kennedy's head off, okay? They kicked this out of the schools, and this is one they don't want you to read also, okay? Because this explains, in a theoretical approach, what radio frequency emissions do <laughs> to living systems. Now, what happened to this thing here? Is this thing working? You see this? Let me ask you a question. Do you think electrifying these molecules has an effect on your body's ability to uptake? Let's just say that there's oxygen in here. Let's say that we take a plasma. We, we, let's just say we, we super excite or change the orbital spin properties of the valence electrons of diatomic oxygen. What do you think that does to the hemoglobin in your blood that binds the oxygen and carries it miraculously to your cells? Through the 75,000 miles of circulatory system that Almighty God put in you that nobody wants you to understand because in the schools they teach you you're some evolutionary accident and that you're just an animal and you came from a freaking rock. Do you know what electrifying things do? They know. You know why? Because they've been studying it for decades, folks, and now they're rolling it out. And we got this guy in the White House that wants to put a few more Jacksons in your wallet, and that means you're supposed to shut all your instincts down and look the other way as they put a bunch of weapons all over the light poles? No. You need to wake up. I'm sorry I'm getting this way again, but you know what? We're running out of time. This is an agenda, folks. This is an agenda, and I'm here to tell you that based on my research that this stuff is going to make people sick. It's going to sterilize people. It's going to make people hear voices. It's going to make people crazy. It's going to change the biology of every living system on the face of this earth. And they know exactly what it does because they've been studying it for decades. And this is just one of many books. They've got this stuff down to science. You think they bring these 180 IQ guys over here from all these countries and, and put them up for 5 to 10, 15, 20 years in a bed and breakfast called a university and put them in a think tank? They make the weapons with these people. And you look at all the patents on nanotechnology right now. They're all coming out of China. All right? And this 5G stuff is all coming out of Israel. Those are the two players. Of course, there's some American companies in here for the money because they could set it up in Texas or in San Francisco or whatever. But the bottom line is those are the two places where this stuff's coming from. I've done my homework. I know what I'm talking about. I understand what this stuff does. And I also understand that they're not going to win. All right, how's that? Go ahead, Gary. <clears throat> well, one thing I wanted to say a few minutes ago when you were talking, um, a lot, a lot of our friends and family that buy into this stuff, because people are going to buy into it, obviously, they're going to give away their uh, non-Internet of Things electronics. They're going to get rid of their microwaves. They're going to get rid of their toasters and their coffee makers and all that stuff. And so for those of you who understand all of this, you're going to be able to go to garage sales <clears throat> or Goodwill and get this stuff for a dollar. That's right. And, and that's what and, I do. And then, and then there'll, and then at some point, if this goes far enough, there will end up being a black market for this stuff, for the, the old electronics. And so that's why I say, keep your old electronics. Do not get rid of them. I know you said yes, uh, in a video, I think today or yesterday, uh, you know, you drive a 20 year old car. I drive a, a 17 year old car. Same thing. I beat you. I know. Same thing. You know, don't give up your old cars because the new cars are going to be synced up for connectivity, for connected vehicles, for Internet of Things. And you do not want your car being on that matrix because they talk about it in here. Oh, well, the cars will be hooked up to the Internet. Well, what happens if the Internet drops? Are all the cars going to crash into each other? Look, folks, they're selling this 5G to us that we need driverless cars. I mean, they're telling us that we need driverless cars. Do we need a driverless car? Let me tell you something. That's scary. Real quick, this this uh, Wall Street Journal article, why we need the 5G, uh, we, uh, downloading media. Okay, we got fast enough download speed. I mean, how fast you want? Why can't you just watch it? Why do you have to download it? Because you want to watch it 100 times? You want to commit video piracy? Autonomous vehicles? We don't need autonomous vehicles. We need people. We need jobs. We need human interaction. We need human oversight. We need redundancy. We need fail-safes. Virtual reality? I mean, come on. We already have virtual reality. You, got, you want your kid on virtual reality? Healthcare, 
remote patient monitoring and the internet of things no you know what we need folks you know what we need we need people outside in the sun playing ball kids falling in love kids riding their bikes we need husbands paying attention to their wives wives paying attention to their husbands we need people interacting with each other instead of putting on these headsets and these earphones and and people losing their minds as they electrify the atmosphere and turn everybody in to electrified creatures as they inject people with nano compounds as they rain down metallic nano compounds from the chemtrails as they get these into our bodies and as they hit us with these radio frequency infrastructure systems the harp the tesla antenna farms the wireless arrays the cellular infrastructure the doppler installations we're being bombarded folks you see this right here what you can't see can't hurt you this is just a prime example I've used here to show you what power a nine volt battery can do to a gas. These things are running on 120 volts and some of them will be pushing major voltage. They've got heat sinks on them, folks. We got to wake up. All right, let's talk about this monster right here. So uh, this is a uh, Meredith Atwell Baker, the, the president and CEO of CTIA. And uh, here's what she has to say. Oh boy. Put her picture out there, please. Close it nice and close because she's famous. Okay. It's focused right about there. Go ahead. We need to show who these people are because these people are making a they're making a killing off of trying to kill us, folks. That's a fact. She, okay. She says we need cell siting reform. We are competing with nations that approve new wireless sites in weeks or even days. We need the FCC to give clear directions to localities on procedures and fees for tomorrow's 5G networks. I, I just got back from the Fullerton City Council. Perhaps you watched some of my comments to the, uh, the bought and paid for lackeys that have been put there by various industries. But let me tell you something, folks. Right now, this is still a constitutional republic, and we're still – a lot of these cities are municipal corporations. Some of these are charter cities, but they got old rules, old laws, old bylaws have been on the books – since they were incorporated somewhere around the turn of the century. And there are procedures and checks and balances in place for local zoning and decisions for land use. And these wireless companies, and check this out, Dave, Dave Hoppy, the, 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 the director of public works for the city of Fortune, announced his retirement tonight. I got the director of public works on record. When I confronted them about the 5G coming, he said that he's not aware of any studies on human health. I have that on record, folks. The director of public work was setting up a boilerplate lease agreement for all the companies to come put these transmitters all over the light poles in Fullerton, all over city property. And he admitted he's never seen a study on health. And so these kind of people, what's this gal's name? Uh, Meredith Atwell Baker. Meredith Atwell Baker. Now, I don't know if this is a man or a woman. She could be the judge of that based on all the deception today. But nonetheless, she says that we got we to gotta move up. We got to do away with these archaic antiquated policies where cities have to go through processes and committees and approvals in order for someone to put up a weapons grid. And you know something, folks? I like those checks and balances because that keeps us safe and that keeps everybody honest. And anybody that comes to you and tells you that they got to hurry up and do this has got something up their sleeve, okay? And that may not be in your best interest. And they, be, they may be being paid to do it or there may be some even more sinister and nefarious agendas behind the fact that they want to ram it through before you wake up to what it is. Well, and the way I described it in my video was what she wants to do by having cell siting reform is she wants to have it to where not even your city knows what's going on. And then you just wake up one day because they do it in the, they just do it in the middle of the night at three in the morning. And then you wake up one day and there's a, there's a little cell tower right outside your house uh, transmitting this stuff. That's basically, that's basically what she's advocating for is just do it in the middle of the night when no one's looking, your city doesn't even know about it. And then you just go, Oh, what's that? Oh, okay. Well, whatever. Just like when you drive down the road and there's a new fake palm tree that you never seen before. You're like, where did that come from? That, that's what, that's what they're, that's what she was basically advocating for. Well, here's the deal folks. Wi-Fi dangers.com and the forwardsandform.com. I go over what the current Wi-Fi systems are doing to kids. 2.4 gigahertz. That's the frequency they're using right now. That happens to be the frequency at which the dielectric loss of water begins. That's when the water molecules start rotating on their axis. They generate heat, the friction, causes structural isomerism and compounds that absorb as well, meaning they change configuration. But here's the deal. 
I can buy a detector to find out if somebody's irradiating me right now. I can spend about 300 bucks. I can figure out what frequency and what power level and what attenuation level I'm dealing with and I'm being exposed to. With 5G, guess what? Millimeter waves. You can't get a detector that goes above 8 gigahertz. You can't buy one. you got to have a, an oscilloscope that costs tens of thousands of dollars. And you got to be really careful. It's very fragile. You can't put it in your car and drive around on these roads. It'll bounce around and break the thing. We can't tell because we don't have access to technology to test if these emissions are being released on us, deployed on us. We can't find out where they're coming from. We can't find out what frequency. We can't find out what power level. We can't find out anything right now because the detectors are not available to the public. But guess what is available to the public, ladies and gentlemen? What you see with your eyes. So keep your eyes and your ears open for these things going up on the light poles and the telephone poles and the public right of ways around you. We cannot let them get away with this, folks. They want to sneak stuff in with nobody knowing about it, and then we can't test it. This is a weapon, folks. It's invisible. It's odorless. It's colorless. And you can't hear it. But you can see the weapons themselves. As you can see, the systems are deploying. And they will be something that is going to be impossible not to identify. They're going to try to hide them. And Gary, I think you did a pretty okay, good job I on got, that. I got to interject. There you go. Okay, we got another monster. Uh, this is uh, Sunil Barti Mittal, the GSMA chairman. Right, right here, this one. Here's what he said. Are you ready for this one? I'm not sure. Well, it's just basically what you just said right now. He says, he advised that the world should embrace 5G as fast as it can. The ecosystem around 5G needs to be developed on the devices side, on the industrial application side, so that the magic of 5G, which takes us to another level from where we are today, is fully unleashed. So, as I said earlier, they're going to use AI, or they're going to use 5G to to power the artificial intelligence. He wants to unleash 5G as fast as he can, which means he wants to unleash the AI onto our society. Millimeter waves, the frequency bands that are going to be used by the 5G systems affect your eyes. It destroys your body's ability to produce vitamin D. Your body produces vitamin D as sunlight goes through your eyes, folks. You see these right here? These are the window to your soul, and they also are very sensitive to certain color temperatures of light at certain times of the day, as well as... They once are once your eyes are hit with UVA and UVB, and it's really important that you don't wear sunglasses. And by the way, I've been working on a computer screen for 30 years, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't wear glasses. Okay, see these eyes? 2020 vision for 30 years on a computer screen. You want to know what my secret is? No sunglasses, folks. An hour a day of sunlight. I don't care, rain or shine, you need to be out in the sunlight. These people are putting in millimeter wave systems that are going to destroy your body's ability to produce vitamin D as UVA and B comes to your eyes, it triggers reactions in your body, mechanisms in your body that produces vitamin D, which the deficiency thereof leads to all kinds of endocrine and hormonal cancers. Ladies, pay heed to this. If you don't want to have a mastectomy when you're 39 and have your ovaries cut out and you turn into a eunuch before your husband's even done with his activity, stop depriving yourselves of sunlight exposure and stop giving yourself over to this ridiculous mindset that you're going to stay young forever. Look, I'm 52 years old, folks. You think I care about a few wrinkles? Guess what? That's an atlas right there. I can find my way to St. George, Utah out of a wet paper bag by looking at this thing. All right? Aging is natural, folks, but you got to age gracefully and you got to get the light through your eyes. Now, the other thing this millimeter wave technology stuff does, aside from what it does to the oxygen molecules, okay, it destroys the melanin, the melanin cells in your skin that produce the vitamin D. When the sun hits your skin, have you ever noticed me out in the sun? come back from the beach, your skin's kind of oily. <laughs> when I was a when I was a young guy, I loved the look on girls with the bronze skin and a little oil tint to it. God gave that to us for a reason. Number one, it's beautiful to look at. And number two, that is how the body produces vitamin D. Because what happens is the body produces it, it comes up through your skin, and then it reabsorbs it as the day progresses. You're not supposed to go wash all that oil off with soap when you get home. You're supposed to let your body reabsorb that. That bronze look is natural. 
It doesn't cause skin cancer. You know what causes skin cancer? Eating a bunch of sugar, drink a bunch of alcohol, not getting any sunlight, eating a bunch of processed foods. Instead of eating the seeds that God told us to eat, the seeds, the pits, the apricots, the peaches, and the apple seeds, and the, the sour gum, the, 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 the millet, the camet, the spelt, the buckwheat, the compounds that contain nitrilocytes that we're not getting in the grass-fed things. We need grass-fed meat. Look, it's not the sunlight, folks, but they're going to do something to our bodies with this millimeter weight system that's going to affect our body's ability to produce vitamin D, and it's going to affect our eyes' ability to produce vitamin D, as well as track and trace every single thing you do down to how much toilet paper you use. I'm telling you, folks, we got to stop this. You can't bring these devices into your house. Do not buy these phones. Go back to court and everything. Get all the Wi-Fi out of your house. Don't bring in the Y gig. Gary, go on. I'm going to shut this off. All right. Um, we got another guy, uh, Graham Tricky. Uh, he is the GSMA head of Internet of Things. He forecasts 25 billion connected devices by 2025, creating a revenue opportunity of $1.1 trillion. Make America great okay, again. Stop right there. What's economy. the time frame on that? This is really important. Go ahead. 25 billion connected devices okay. by 2025. Okay, stop right there. So seven years from now is going to generate how much? $1.1 trillion. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to take seven years to irradiate the entire face of the earth to generate what? One point? $1.1 trillion. Do you know $2 trillion was missing from the Pentagon just a couple days before the Pentagon was hit on 9-11. Do you realize all we got to do is ask Donald Rumsfeld where the trillion dollars went and we can scrap this whole thing. We can scrap this whole thing. Right. We don't need this garbage. If we need a trillion dollars, then why don't we go to the accounting office at the Pentagon and say, where did the $2 trillion go that went missing before the Pentagon was blown up on 9-11? No, they're using money as an enticement to all these knuckleheads who got, you know what, look, these people, are they evil? Maybe some of them are. Most of them are just given over to the technology. They get into this cult where they're totally into this tech and they have this being that resonates with the being cool, being part of this, this chic nouveau kill grid that they think is bitching. Okay. It's not, and it's not sexy. It's not sleek and it's not nice. It's evil. It's dehumanizing. It's dangerous. It's deleterious to human existence and it's demonic at its core. So all these people, they're making, you know, two, 300 grand, they're getting fat stock option bonuses and stuff, but they're selling humanity down the river and they're making Satan himself one step closer to becoming omnipotent and omniscient on the face of this earth because he is going to be able to become the prince of the power of the air through these devices because these emissions are going to be able to be used. The reason they're using these frequencies, folks, you know, I, I can't show you a wire right Well, I'll show you a wire. I have a wired mouse. Can you see this? Well, maybe you can. I don't want to disconnect it. Well, you can't see this wired mouse. But guess what else? I got? I got a corded phone, folks. You see this? That cord right there? Well, here's the deal. A couple of couple wires in there. Doesn't, doesn't transmit a lot of data. Guess what? They're using these millimeter waves because it's like, it's like the Holland Tunnel, folks. You can put so much data through this stuff. It's unbelievable. The capability it has for transmitting data is miraculous, but here's the deal. We don't need it. But they do. And they're going to use this frequency. They don't care if it's killing us and making us sick. They just want to track and trace. And the devil himself wants to be God again. It ain't never going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they want this. We already have plenty of download speed. We can already watch Netflix on this thing if we want. The problem is, is they can't track and trace and hook everything up fast enough. So they want to build a hollow tunnel all over the place. And I'm going to go into something else after he's done talking. So stay tuned, folks. This is really important. All right, another monster. We have um, Sprint Executive Chairman Marcel, Marcelo Clower, and uh, he talks about uh, right now the FCC is looking at potentially allowing the merger of Sprint and T-Mobile because if they merge together as a single company, it will allow the United States to be the leader in the world in 5G technology, and they actually blocked it at the most recent hearing, or whatever hearing they had, they blocked it because... Uh, they got all this new information they had to look at. Antitrust, probably. So, yeah. So, uh, anyway, um, it's possible for this to get stopped, whether it be through the president, uh, through executive order, because the president stopped the Qualcomm uh, merger. merger. You know, so this, you know, there's a possibility this could get stopped. Uh, you know, there should be 50 million letters written to the FCC to not allow this merger. So here he is, another one of these monsters, drunk on technology. 
just totally worshiping this stuff. He says two different things here that I want to point out. So here's the first one. He says, this is what I touched on earlier. Um, yeah, this is the one what I touched on earlier about how they're going to replace humans with robots. He says, this is very important. This is not good, folks. He this says, not good. the level of innovation and disruption in the next 30 years is going to be significantly larger than what we have experienced the last 300 years. Companies that use artificial intelligence with the power of 5G to disrupt traditional industries are always going to win. Companies that don't use artificial intelligence will be left behind. So he is saying that there will be more disruption in, in with industry in the next 30 years than what we have seen in 300 years. And every time there's technological innovation, there's always companies that close down, that fold up, new jobs get created. They're basically saying that there's going to be so many industries and jobs that are going to be lost as a result of this, that if you don't get on board with the AI, you're going to be left out in the dust. you have any comment on that? I want to go on to the next thing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're facing what uh, could be the dark ages in terms of economics. And, you know, everywhere I look, you know, I see that, uh, you know, they've got everybody living in one of these, you know, these prison systems. And then, you know, like this is Bavaria. This is where the factory is. You see how beautiful that is? No people, no homes, just nice and green, all the people gone. This happens to be in Bavaria where the Illuminati was founded in 1776. This is a big player in this uh, network optimization uh, agenda here, folks. Look, they're going to take away a bunch of jobs. They're going to kill a bunch of businesses. And they admit they don't need all of us. We're just a bunch of useless eaters. They're telling your kids in school are overpopulated. They're telling your kids in college that there's not enough resources. They're telling your kids in junior college that there's not enough to go around. There's too many people. There's all these kids getting out of college that don't want to have a family. They don't want to have children. They've, they've conned everybody into believing that we're overpopulated, even though there's 95% of the United States is rural open space. And yet we need all this technology for what? You know what everybody needs, folks? Everybody needs a garden. Everybody needs a water filter. Everybody needs a well. And everybody needs a couple acres. And you want to know something? If everybody had some solar panels and some good insulation and some good equipment, they could all spread out over the entire face of the United States and live happily ever after. They don't want that. They got you all messed up on the taxation system, living in these kill grids where if they flip a switch, they can change the frequency or shut off the food supply. That's a dangerous precedent. And when people are enslaved economically because there will be no jobs, they'll all be on public assistance. That's why they're that's talking about universal basic dangerous. income. That's right. That's why they're talking about that. that. That's, you know, and this whole, so I don't want to talk about socialism, but that's why they're talking about universal basic income because they know there will be nothing for most people no, to do but no. sit around and collect a paycheck. And the government's got it set up to if your parents have something that the, the, the state tax is going to kill it all. It's, it's unbelievable. All right. So this is from the same guy. Everything we've covered is in the first three pages of just this. It's three, the first three pages is all of this. All right. The same guy also says, um, he says, uh, let's see. Real quick before you go on, Gary. You, you ladies and gentlemen, you see that nice picture behind us? By the way, that's the sun setting over the ocean on a flat earth because that's what we live on. But I don't, I don't mean to digress, but I want you to look at this. I want to see if the camera picks this up okay. You see this picture? Look at the chemtrails, folks. Look at the chemtrails in the sky. That's an integral part of this system is the metallic nanocompounds raining down on us. I mean, it's crazy, folks. Whatever happened to the – oh, by the way, I love Goodwill. And I'll tell you, I don't work for that company, but there's two of them within a stone's throw of my house, and I hit them every weekend. Somebody threw away or gave away to Goodwill this this family's entire selection of slides. You know the old slides you put in the Kodachrome projector or whatever? So I got hundreds and hundreds of these slides. And the reason I picked them up for three bucks and the viewer for $2.99 that runs on batteries, a little incandescent flashlight, is I wanted to see what the sky looked like 40 years ago. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of these slides where there's people – Outside at the, at the Highway 39 drive through at Dodger Stadium, Angel Stadium, Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, all over the United States, Chicago, Detroit, all the landmarks, San Francisco, no chemtrails, folks, no lines in the sky in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the early 70s, all the way through like the late 80s. They showed up in California in 1994. They were running them in the desert, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, testing out. 
but there were none of there were none of those things, folks. We got to wake up. They have got this stuff even in the cartoons now. Now they're in these trade publications. It's the new norm, folks. No rain. There, there was a no uh, water. There, there was a. I, I don't think it was around here, but somebody found it and sent it to us. There was a one of these city meetings where they're planning for Agenda 21. Right. Where they're planning for Agenda 21. And they had these graphics of like the future, you know, what it's going to look like. And they had chemtrails in, it was an animation. They had chemtrails in the animation. It was unbelievable. The Twilight Zone had chemtrails in the sky too in some of the episodes. I'm talking about in the fake backgrounds, not out in the Nevada desert when they were filming some of their fake, uh, you know, other planet trips or whatever. But these were actual chemtrails in the backdrop, the fake, the fake scenes. All right. So we're, we're, we're talking about the, the, the executive chairman of Sprint once again. So he also says, uh, Clower added, artificial intelligence also has the potential to transform healthcare by reducing incorrect diagnoses and offering patients personalized medications based on their genetic profile. Oh, gosh. Well, let me finish. Today we get diagnosed based on symptoms. In the future, artificial intelligence will predict when you're going to get sick simply by looking at your DNA. You want me to talk about yeah, this? Yeah, no, I want to hear All your right. take on that. All right, here's the deal, folks. They, if they can, okay, they can go to your trash can, and if you don't flush your toilet paper, they can get your DNA off the toilet paper or the Q-tip. And they can take that DNA and reverse engineer pathogenic organisms or nanotechnology that can be cell-specific, tissue-specific to kill you and make you sick. If they can inject you with nanomachines, and by the way, like I said, I, st I read the patents, and you know, when I look at, this is one of my books from college, folks, and I stay up till 11, 12 o'clock at night, you know, working out these reactions and, you know, reading spectroscopy and, and all this stuff. Look, I, I don't know if you can see some of this stuff, but look, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck, folks. I know what the, I know what these people are capable of, and I know what the technology is capable of, and I know the advances in medicine, in biotechnology in the past 27 years. It's unbelievable, folks. Since the turn of uh, since the turn of the century, since 1999, the advances in biotech are astronomical. They have the ability right now to create a molecule that encapsulates a nano machine, and they can inject it via IV or vaccine or syringe into your body, and they can guide that and activate it to turn on at a specific type of cell based on the type of tissue it's found in, in your body and open up and release the nano machine and it's guided by radio frequency control and let me tell you folks it's all about network optimization and it's all about no people solar powered everything with robots the elite's going to live in a situation where they're away from us and we're going to be crammed into the kill grids and they're going to use this stuff to kill us. Now, they're going to tell us, oh, it's for a benefit. They get, we're going to be able to get medicine before we get sick. So you think, hey, this medicine is helping us right now? This medicine is killing everybody. This medicine is making you sick. Every time you take a pill, it causes another problem. And you get another medicine. You know what the emergency room is full of? Doctors reading the people's medication lists. I've been in the ER because years ago, my mom broke her neck in a car accident, almost killed her. And by the grace of almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, she should have died on that freeway and she's still alive today. But these doctors in the ER, all they're doing is reading medication interactions. That's why they taught me this, to become a doctor. They want you to understand how the drugs interact with the body's chemistry. But they never want you to understand how the radio frequency fields interact with the genetics and the molecules and the living systems and the subcellular components like the mitochondria and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the nucleus and all of these parts of the cell. Did you know that they, it's funny how they make a cell out in biology. They make a cell out to be a, you know, a circle with a little, a couple little goopy things in it. You know, a cell is more complicated than this. Did you know that one cell has more infrastructure than that city? Did you know that? Because the schools teach you nothing but lies and you believe them. Look folks, 
If we let these people get away with controlling our health care with these emissions, they'll be able to do anything they want to us. They can make you hear voices and go nuts. and here's your Prozac. They can make your heart stop. Say, here you go. Here's your nitroglycerin. They can make your insulin receptors deformed through the structural isomerism. There you go. Take your insulin. I mean, there you go. Your heart rate's irregular. You got to get on the AFib meds. And before you know it, you're in a nursing home hooked up to a drip system and they're raiding your assets and your kids are carving you up like turkey on Thanksgiving. I mean, it's crazy, folks, as they harvest the organs. I, I mean, we cannot let this stuff come in. We don't need it. There's nothing wrong with wired connections. There's nothing wrong with old light bulbs. There's plenty of electricity. You can put solar panels everywhere. Why are they why are they ramming all this stuff down our throat so fast? And they don't want any regulatory control. They want to take away all limitations on placement of all this stuff. And they're admitting the FCC guy, the, the Wheeler admits that there's no studies and we're rolling it out whether you like it or not. Look, folks, this is a, this this they've declared war on us. They've stated in no uncertain terms that this is coming. We haven't tested it for health effects, and it's coming. And we don't want you saying no to it. We're not going to let the city say no to it. They devised a telecom act. Bill Clinton signed the telecom act, which doesn't really apply to these small antenna sightings, but they're using a misconstrued Ninth Circuit, or I believe it was a San Diego Court of Appeals case, that says you can't discuss health effects of microwave radiation. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You mean to tell me that you can put up these antennas and we can talk about what it does to us? The hell we can't. And you know what you say? Hell no. That's what you say. Don't let them put it in your yard. Don't let them in your yard. Don't let them put it on your house. Don't let them put it on your light poles. Plant trees and block this stuff. Don't bring the 60 gigahertz system in your house because guess what? There's going to have to be a relay that's going to have to come in your house. And you know what, folks? You don't have to put one in your house. You don't have to have this stuff in your house. You can shut it out. You put the UV blocking film on your windows. You put up steel screens on your walls. You could put up lead paint in your house if you can get your hands on it. They banned it for a reason. You can do all kinds of things to keep this stuff. The, the millimeter waves don't penetrate well. It's easy to block it. That's why they're cutting all the trees down. Guess what? Plant trees! Why do you think they're shutting off the water so the trees won't grow? Why do you think they're making all these water restrictions so you don't plant trees? Guess what? Plant, go online and find out where you live and find the fastest growing trees you can get your hands on. And by golly, put them around the perimeter of your property. I did. I got a house with a metal roof. And this place is shielded all around. Okay? Do your homework on what trees grow fast and plant them. If you live in an apartment, find a way to shield your apartment. Do some homework. How to block microwaves and millimeter waves from coming through the walls. There's ways to protect yourself, folks. They can't get you unless you let them. And these weapons are only going to go in if you bring them into your house or you let them put it on your property. What are you going to do? You're going to suck your thumb and watch the ball game? You're going to have another beer and watch another Illuminati sex slave whore on the on the halftime show? Or are you going to stand up and look your kids in the eye and say, I love you kids. I'm going to protect you because people died barefoot in the snow, bled out under a blue sky on a blanket of white snow for us to have this conversation and be free to say no to things. You're going to dishonor those people that have given their lives for our freedoms? You know what I say? No. I get it from my wife all the time. Guess what? Men can say no too. You say no to this. And I mean it. I'm just kidding about my wife. <laughs> She's a wonderful woman. I love her. <laughs> Go ahead, Gary. All right. I want to shift gears a little bit. Uh, so this one says, uh, it's an article. I'm going to read the whole thing. It's very short. It's only like two or three paragraphs. It says, 5G brings human touch to live events. The increased speed and ultra low latency enabled by 5G will help humanize live events. So they're going to replace humans with robots, yet they're saying it's going to humanize us. Bring fans up close and personal with athletes and celebrities. With 5G connectivity, we'll actually be able to show, for instance, that basketball player Steph Curry's heart rate throwing a free throw to win the game is actually a lot higher than in the first quarter when he's shooting that free throw. He added... There's no reason basketball player LeBron James can't have a mini camera embedded in his jersey so you can actually be LeBron going in for a dunk so we can experience all that. Okay, that, that's what I wanted to read. What are, the, what, 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 what are they going to introduce the public to? Through these uh, through these uh, sporting events, what are they introducing the public? Well, to? What, what, what they're trying to do is they're trying to find a way to sell this crap to us. We don't need to know what the guy's heart rate is. Well, hold on, hold on. That's that's not the answer I was looking for. Virtual. 
this is transhumanism. They are they are introducing well, yes. the idea of attaching machines to our bodies. Implants. Yeah. So this is where they're going with this. And and that's going to be the elite's solution. If people I say if because I, I'm not I'm not a scientist. I don't understand this stuff as well as you do. But if people are going to be getting sick, like the like the way you're predicting, then the only way out is going to be to, to merge with the to machines mature, to fix to, the problem. To merge with the machines yourself and to sync up with the wireless connectivity through your own body, because as biological androids, we can't hook up to the wireless system. And so the fact that they're going to attach machines to NBA players, because that's so cool, will know their heart rate when they're shooting a free throw. They're they're introducing the public to transhumanism. Well, th absolutely. I mean, that's been going for some time now with. Uh, the merging of man and machines and you have i mean we're not going to get into more gallons here tonight but there are stuff that's in people right now these uh, piezoelectric compounds that are actually creating their little factories but you know look folks we don't need any more of this bs con job i don't care what the guy's heart rate is when he's shooting a free throw any more than i care about what your heart rate is when you're making love to your wife on friday night after about 10 beers okay it doesn't matter what matters here is this is the con of the century and I want to ask Gary a question because Gary has some information here. There are places where 5G is not going in for years. And I'd like you to talk about that, Gary, because there, right. this is really telling. Because I've already told you most of where this stuff's coming from. The players in 5G are China and Israel. Those are the two big players. And South Korea. And South Korea, to a lesser extent. Samsung's heavily involved in this. But you've got the 5G coming out of Israel and out of China. Those are where the inventions are made and the production facilities. Most of the nanotech and a, a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the patents. I won't go any further than what I just said, Gary. Why don't you tell us and show the audience what areas aren't going to get lit up like a Christmas tree? Oh, you're gonna have to move that. I am <laughs> gonna move it. All right. So we have this map go here. Go closer. Go uh, closer it, to it. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going and hold it so it'll focus on it. Keep going. Go a little closer. Well, I, I, I want to show where my finger's at. So it says projected 5G deployments 2018 through 2025. And the, the green is 2018. The only country going first is the United States. And then uh, 2020 is the red. 2025 is the black. And I'll, I'll just read the countries off. Oh, and then hold on. And then the gray, the gray are the nations that uh, are not on this list at all. So they're either post-2025 or they're not going to get it at all. And the nations that are post-2025 are Greenland, Venezuela, most of Africa, Yemen, Mongolia, uh, Nepal, Vietnam, Papua, uh, Israel, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, uh, Libya, Madagascar. Is that is it, unless that's Iceland? I don't. Wait, do you know what this is? Well, that's Greenland, and right there, I I don't this know. This is I, I don't know what that is. Okay, that's part oh, of and Greenland. then uh, that's part of Greenland, and then most of Central America. Only Costa Rica is lit up. So Nicaragua, Honduras, Panama. These are all the countries that are either post 2025 or not getting it at all. And most of these countries have something in common. Except for Israel. Mo yeah. They're third world. Most, and they're of, them, all most, of, them are, most of them are third world and they're destroyed. Yeah. Like Venezuela. Do you, do you think they're going to build this infrastructure in Venezuela when they're eating birds and cats and dogs and, and zoo animals? Well, so why is Israel not getting 5G? Until after 2025, if possible, you're never well, going to get it. I'd, I'd like to ask uh, someone about that because uh, if they're the ones supposedly developing it, then I want to know why they're not saying give it to us first. Because they keep saying this is so wonderful. Oh, this is so wonderful. What's the source of this information? It's in this magazine, folks. Now, this is not something that was put out back when Clinton was in the White House. This was from 13th September 2018, folks. And this shows... And I'm going to repeat this. Hang on. I'm going to repeat this, folks. This stuff is 5G is coming out of Israel. 
there's no doubt they're behind this because their scientists and their country is proud to state that 5G is from Israel. Now, why is Israel not getting 5G? Why? Why are they not getting it in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, and beyond? Why? Why if if it's good for the goose, why ain't it this, good for the these gander? Whole, these whole magazines are about how wonderful this is going to be. We can't live without this. Yeah, this yeah, is we liberating. Can't live without it's an economic it. boom. Yeah, they, they're not going to have it for why themselves. Why are they not going to put it over there? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, until that question's answered, Donald Trump, if you watch this, or if any of your handlers are out there listening to this, I got a question for you clowns, and you're clowns, because you know what? You want to put this all over the United States, even in the rural areas, and you want to set $80 billion aside to irradiate every last man, woman, child, and insect, and rat, and animal on the face of the United States, and yet the people in Israel and in Syria, well, no, Israel is not the same as Syria. Israel's not getting bombed right now. Syria is getting bombed right now. Uh, what other countries over there? The Middle Eastern countries that aren't part of this are already in the Stone Age. Israel's a technocracy, and they're on the cutting edge of all of the technology, and yet they don't want to put this in their country. Ladies and gentlemen, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Do they know something they're not telling us? Do they know something that we don't know? Are they keeping a little secret from us? I want an answer to that question. And that is an absolutely fair question to ask. And why is China not putting in Mongolia? Is that going to be the safe haven for the elite in that country? I know 5G is not going into Donald Trump's Florida town. Yeah, Palm Beach. It's like they're not putting 5G in Palm Beach because they managed to rewrite some local zoning aspect that has to do with aesthetics. How ugly is one of these little things that'll be sticking up? You can't even see the things. They're going to disguise them. What a bunch of nonsense. They could hide these things in Donald Trump's neighborhood. He didn't want it in his neighborhood. He wants it in yours. He wants it on the pole in your backyard. Folks, you got to listen to me. We're dealing with evil people who've got an evil agenda, and they mean harm. They don't come in peace, folks. And this stuff is a weapons grid. It's a kill grid. It is not your friend. And you need to look at this as an attack on our privacy, our health, and our reproduction. All right, let me talk about privacy. Well, this is not really privacy, but it goes along with it. So I haven't read this word for word, this whole, uh, these magazines, but I, so I've kind of been looking at it as you've been talking, and I, I kind of stumbled onto something that I hadn't looked at before. So uh, there's this guy here. His name is uh, Kayvon Karimi from Blackberry. And uh, that he, company's still in business, I guess. So he's asked a question. Uh, he's this is a QA uh, interview. He sa it says, Is there an opportunity for mobile operators to play a greater role in the ecosystem beyond, beyond connectivity provider? And he says, um, <clears throat> Beyond reliable connectivity, the industry will have to find a way to deal with enormous amounts of data generated by each car every day, which in turn can create all new kinds of services. Wait a minute, that's not the right question. Am I on the right thing? Hold on, I'm sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> and just a reminder, this is what they plan on doing to Hold everything, on. folks. That's not the right one. You know what this is? <laughs> oh, here it is. I'm sorry. This is this is it. There's another one of these Q and A's. All right, this is from uh, his name is E Y A L E L P F E I F E L. He's the co-founder and CTO of something called In Person. I M P E R S O N. <clears throat> That's him right there. <clears throat> so some of his interviews, he's asked, uh, "What examples can you?" Sh let me see. Uh... You okay, my friend? Taking notes? Yeah, or you got something for me? You, you heard it? Help you? Help you? Why am I not? Is it in this? Wait, I'm in the wrong magazine. That's why I'm not finding. I'm sorry, guys. It's okay. You're forgiven. All right, hold on. <clears throat> All right, here it is. This is actually a okay. Third time the charm. This guy's name is Alistair McLeod, the CEO of Terralytics, and uh, he's asked a question. 
How will smart city solutions change the way cities look and operate in the future? And he says, cities will become much more automated and we'll see transit systems, mobility services, and city services working together in harmony when we begin coordinating efforts using a mobility operating system. The outcomes may be as simple as extending a green light to accommodate people rushing for a specific train and then, and then it goes on, or, or let me continue. I'll read it again. The outcomes may be as simple as extending a green light to accommodate people rushing for a specific train or as a complex as studying real time and predictive human mobility data and dynamically solving public transit issues before they arise. Now, we're talking about artificial intelligence, AI. Now, right now at the intersections, there's cameras. But those cameras are not alive. In this scenario, the cameras are alive and they're watching you in real time and they're altering street lights in real time. And they read this off. Oh, it's such a good idea. The, the, the It's going to know when you're coming so it keeps the light green. Well, it has to be watching you to do that. I mean, this is all about watching everywhere you go. You people going to put up with this? You going to sit back and let this happen? Gary Galeno is from Grindall 61 YouTube folks, and he has spent years exposing Agenda 21 and UN Agenda 2030 about how they're creating these high-tech prisons in these compact cities. I spent years researching what microwaves and millimeter waves do to human health, all the way down to the subcellular level. And I can tell you unequivocally that this stuff is a sterilization agenda and a kill group. And it's not something that is being rolled out for our benefit. You know, I remember, I mentioned this before. I bought this house I'm in, and a guy that used to live here was an executive, and he was a scientist for a uh, defense contractor, and he was into all this high-level radio communication stuff. And behind me in this room I'm in are file cabinets full of old books and magazines. Some of the magazines are from the 1950s, Scientific American magazines, National Geographic from the 50s, ladies and gentlemen, from the 1950s. They have been working on honing and perfecting this stuff for decade after decade after decade and after decade. And they've taken the brightest and the finest of our young men and women and put them in these think tanks and these defense contractors to perfect this stuff. They know what it does. And they have had decades to intermarry the disciplines, but in cubicles, to what the radiation biology effects have at what frequency, at what power level, at what modulation rate, at what power density, what specific tissue, what specific absorption rate. They've got everything down to a science. I want to give you a quick example, folks. On Apple 666, Artemis, the fortuneinformer.com front page, wifi dangers.com. And the front page of my YouTube channel, The Forge and Informer, you'll see me doing a speech where I show Apple's corporate headquarters, the subcellular components from their landscape architecture plans of the human egg. These guys built a $5 billion sigil in memoria to their agenda, folks. It shows the slides out of the biology textbooks written into their landscape architecture plans about how microwaves from their wireless devices affect even fertility. And I cite the studies and I make the correlation from the scientific studies that shows that non-thermal power levels of frequencies used in wireless communication systems at Wi-Fi frequencies in use today result in morphological changes to a subcellular component called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And that's the, the subcellular component of the human egg that runs a zonal reaction. When you have an egg that gets hit with a sperm, one sperm hits it, it hardens, nothing else gets in. That's how you and I came into being by the grace of God. These guys have got these weapon systems in place, okay, that affect subcellular components. And that's not the only subcellular component they can mess with. And Apple's corporate headquarters conveniently has a cross section of the human egg with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum missing. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. This stuff is all in your face. It's a weapons grid, it's a weapon system. You cannot. And you know what? I can't get over the fact that Israel's not putting 5G in, according to this document that you showed me. 
there's they're not why why is that whole area not slated for deployment when in fact this stuff you know their 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 talpiot program brags about you know the 5g was developed in in had hasharan in israel folks why aren't they putting it in first over there to see how it works out for them i mean they lead the world in the technological advancements most of the high-tech stuff you know, they, they got all our trade secrets from darpa transferring all this this technology through from the 70s going forward and they, they're rolling it out and yet they're not putting it in their country now if i'm wrong about this and this trade publications got this wrong i'd sure like to know about it because according to this trade publications documentation that whole region is not slated to get it for another seven years and yet we're going to get it rammed down our throat whether we like it or not this is not a good situation folks this is not a good situation and you cannot do this to innocent people who are not knowledgeable about what this stuff does and what the symptoms of exposure are i mean this is going to be like living in an airport scanner folks it's the same type of radiation it is millimeter wave emissions that's what they use at the airport in the body scanners you're going to be living in a body scanner folks what do you think this does they know they know exactly what this stuff does you know why because they've been studying it for decades and I've been studying it for the last year. See this book right here? This is one of the most dangerous books you'll ever read if you really want to understand this stuff. Now, I used to play with stick figures and run all these equations to figure out what happens when you turn petroleum into acid analyte or acetaminophen in a laboratory because you can synthesize an aspirin or a Tylenol out of crude oil. You just need to know how to run the reactions and use particular reagents and run the temperatures and all that stuff. So they know how to make oil into aspirin. They also know how to make this into the end of humanity. And they're not messing around, folks. Listen to me on this. They know what this stuff does. That's why they're in such a hurry to put it everywhere before you figure out what they're doing. And there's a reason why they want your guns. There's a reason why they want you jacked up on medication, addicted to drugs and pornography, so you won't fight back. And so you go along with it. And you'll sit there in a box room with a headset on your eyeballs as your wife goes off the deep end into the frosting container. <laughs> and that's what they're doing to the families. This is wrong, ladies and gentlemen. This is wrong. These people... Do not serve the same one I do. These are diametric opposites, folks. You have the prince of the power of the air, and you have the creator of the universe that kicked him out of heaven and threw him down here. He can't get out. I'm going to make a statement tonight. This may trip you out a little bit, but, folks, we are living in a closed system, and there's no way out of here but through Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'm the door. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and life. I talked about this earlier. Look, these guys, they're working for these technology companies. They're cashing the checks. They want to get the Tesla. They want to drive this $100,000 pile of plastic that turns into a pile of Reynolds wrap in an accident. But it puts out more electromagnetic fields than the HVAC system on top of the classroom at the school running through the conduit. People are driving around on rolling cancer-causing vehicles. They're sitting. They're literally wrapping their legs around the brushes of an electric motor these electric cars you know what you know who the jokes on the jokes on all of you techies okay you see this you could take your LED lights your 5,000 Kelvin LED lights and your Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz your Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz you could take your wireless DVR your wireless headset your wireless alarm your wireless TV your wireless telephone your wireless this your wireless that and you can take your Prozac and you can take all the pills you're gonna need because when they bring the 60 gigahertz in your house you block out all the Sun and you sit there with that virtual reality headset on and you eat a bunch of foods with ingredients that I can't even find in this textbook. What do you think the outlook's going to be? Let me tell you another thing. What do you think the prognosis is going to be when you fill your heads full of all kinds of satanic filth that's on the television and the video games and in the movies? Guess what? It ain't too late. Shut it off. You see him? He saves everyone who comes to him. And he can help us stop this. But you're not going to win anything in life 
unless you tap into the power of Almighty God. And the only way to do that is to lay hold on eternal life and to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. There's a bunch of people out there that are going to put out a bunch of disinformation on what we face. And if you don't like my Christian message, then go back and hang out with the pagans at the strip club and enjoy the hangover. You're not going to get one dealing with us. We're believers. We're telling you the truth that could cost us our lives. Because we're going where no one wants to go and we're revealing things that no one wants to talk about. And we're laying it out in a way that you can all understand and take action. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition of loving your neighbor. Warning them what is going on. Telling them how to avoid what is aimed at them. Sticking your neck out for them. What did Jesus say? He says, there's no greater love than when a man lays down his life for his brother. You know, Gary and I, we're, we're risking our lives and our family to tell you the truth. And we hope you'll take this message and get the word out. And we know what we're talking about. And this is simple to understand. This stuff is no good. You don't need it. Don't get rid of all your normal electronics devices. Okay? And please, please, please do not bring any Y gig systems in your house. I keep going over this. This is this is the end connection to where they're going to get you is in your house. Y gig is a new Wi-Fi. It operates at 60 gigahertz. That's the absorption spectrum of oxygen molecules, ladies and gentlemen. Why do you think out of the trillions of frequencies, they're using the oxygen molecule absorption spectrum for the new Y gig systems? And why do the millimeter wave systems for the 5G come up really close to that frequency? Why is it that they're after the air? Well, who's in charge of this? The prince of the power of the air. You don't think he knows what 60 gigahertz does to oxygen molecules? You don't think he knows what that blue light does to your melatonin and your circadian rhythm and egg quality? You don't think he knows what that Fortnite addiction is doing to your marriage? You don't think he knows what Minecraft is doing to young children? You don't think he knows that if he can draw you in and become addicted to virtual reality, you'll never be able to come back to feeling normal again, and you'll need those serotonin reuptake inhibitors? That's right. As your wife dives into the donut box. This isn't funny, folks. This is not funny. We have an epidemic of dehumanization and the destruction of the human spirit and the human health and the spiritual component of those of us who are brothers and sisters who were created in God's image. And let's not let them get away with this, folks. They have no business tracking and tracing and killing us. We don't belong to them. We were bought with a price. The sinless shed blood of Jesus Christ on that cross 2,000 years ago. And the tremendous power that death could not hold him that we have access to. We've been washed and redeemed and we can be filled with his Holy Spirit. Let me tell you one more thing. When he was cast out of heaven down here, he took a third of the angels with him. You know what these angels are? They're homeless people. They're homeless beings. They're looking for people's bodies to inhabit. And there are doorways that they get into us. The TV, the music, the video games. There's a board game I won't even mention the name of because it's such a strong portal. Witchcraft, sorcery, divination, Harry Potter, Disney movies, Hollywood movies, romance novels. Pornographic materials, magazines. Father, in Jesus' name, lay it out, make it all come to nothing in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, Gary, please, you brought all this information over here. You started this, and we're not going to let this good work go without finishing explaining everything. Go right ahead. What else you got? Well, I got a lot of stuff. I mean, you want to keep going? Yes. Okay. We've got an audience here. I don't the people I don't know who's gonna watch this, but share this video far and wide. This is Grind All 61, YouTube channel, Grind All 61, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Fullerton Informer. Subscribe to our channels, spread this information, share this information. Please keep going. All right. So we talked earlier how uh, Sprint and T Mobile are trying to merge into a single company and they're going through the FCC uh, approval process right now. Uh, this is a, uh, a pamphlet from Sprint that came with all this material. So this is it right here. You're going to like this, Joe. You're going to stick around. Yeah, I just want to make a, a quick adjustment to some of the technological features here. All right. So go ahead and get all right. so this is, leaving the room. So this is what it says. It says, cut down on distracted driving and protect your fleet with NATO, N-A-U-T-O. Nato is an intelligent driver safety system that uses video and artificial intelligence to help prevent distracted driving. 
Nado's multi-sensor device mounts to any windshield to assess risks in driver behavior and the road ahead. So here's what it looks like. So they want you to put this uh, little gadget on your on your uh, rear view mirror, and this little thing right here uh, uses artificial intelligence because we got to have artificial intelligence in our vehicles. And so there's a few things that it does, and they're 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 saying right here this is for companies and businesses, but it's pretty obvious that government could easily utilize this kind of technology. And uh, my favorite part about this, is he coming back in? Because yeah. he needs to hear this if he's, uh, I want to hear what he has to say about this one. He's probably going to start yelling. Joe! So they say we need to have this because it reduces costs by decreasing collisions, traffic violations, and insurance claims. It increases visibility into driver behavior with a web-based app that provides driver report cards, event videos, and VERA score, V-E-R-A score. What, that's an acronym of some sort. Improves productivity by helping drivers stay focused on the road and keeping vehicles active. And so, you know, this goes along with everything we've been talking about. This is about total control. You don't need artificial intelligent devices hooked up to your rearview mirror that basically or keeping tabs on your driving and send driver report cards to your boss or in what I say is to the government. And so what I want to have Joe here, and I'll just say it now, I'll say it twice when he comes back. It says it has embedded artificial intelligence. It detects distracted driving and tailgating and automatically provides in cab coaching in cab coaching so this thing's gonna yell at you when it doesn't like how you're driving so this is what i keep saying you know sure you know companies have a right to develop this technology but you don't have to buy it and what i said on my channel a couple days ago grind all 61 was there was a product called google glasses that Google came out with and the public didn't buy it and they admitted it and they pulled the product off the shelf so yes they have a right to develop whatever technology they want but you don't have to buy it are you ready to hear this I am all right so I'm gonna explain it once again much much more brief than what I just said and I'm, I'm just gonna explain it to you because they've already heard it because I want to hear what you have to say about because this, this is almost funny to me. I mean, this is stuff that you see in a cartoon. This is how stupid this is. So this thing attaches to your rear view mirror. This is an this is artificial intelligence. Okay. And it does all kinds of things. But when, they, they say it's for business, right? For like people that drive for a living. But you know, government's gonna Uber, Lyft, yeah. drivers. Embedded artificial intelligence detects distracted driving and tailgating. And automatically provides in cab coaching. So this thing's gonna know how you're driving and then yell at you. It's gonna shout directions at you. It'll probably say, Stop, stop, slow down, don't do that. Okay. Uh, this is how far they're taking all of this. And I look at this as an attempt to sell us a bill of goods because, to be honest with you, that's not a bad thing to an extent if you're coming home from Vegas on Sunday morning. It's 6 a.m. after you've lost all your money and you've drank yourself into a stupor and you're the one that got stuck driving home. And it's nice that you don't end up in the ravine off of ZZYYXX Road because <laughs> this thing told you to get back on the freaking highway. But this is another example of how they're using these simple little trinkets to get us to accept this dragon to come into our living room, folks. I guess I have more cars, too. That's a whole other agenda. You know, I want to go back to something I failed to mention. I, I remember growing up, and when I was talking about these magazines, okay, I've got these, these, I've got cabinets full of magazines going back 50, so I've got some magazines here from the 40s. And they sold the American people on cigarettes as a weight loss miracle. Uh -huh. They sold American people on cigarettes as healthy making you vibrant and thin and strong and alert. 
they had doctors doing advertisements for cigarettes. And when I was growing up, I remember there was ashtrays in the cars, on the planes, on the trains, in the hospital waiting rooms, in the offices, in the restaurants. They put it everywhere. And they told us it was safe. And they told us how great it was. And they put it in all the movies. And all this Hollywood scum. When I look back at these black and whites, and I didn't notice this when I was a kid, their teeth are disgusting. You see these? Okay, they're normal. They're kind of white. I drink coffee once in a while. So they all had disgusting teeth from the cigarettes. And the kids had low birth weight and asthma. And the parents died of emphysema and lung cancer and all kinds of health problems. But they told us cigarettes were a necessity, that we had to have them. They put the ads on the back of the magazines. They put the ads on the televisions. They put the ads in the music. They put the ads everywhere for how good the 5G is. I mean, how the good the cigarettes were. But they didn't tell us about the fact that the companies behind this were involved in developing chemicals to add to these to make us addicted to them. And these things that Gary's bringing up are the things that they're trying to use to make us addicted to the weaponry. This is a con job. This is a scam. This is an insult to your intelligence. Now, you're going to sit back. and Now, they got weather warfare they're waging on us. They got all these psychotronic machines. And they can make you hear voices. I remember years ago they were, they were touting this. You know, I used to love the but I have newspaper clippings from 20 years ago in these suitcases up here. And it's amazing before they changed over all the editorial boards into a bunch of socially uh, liberal progressive idiot nitwits that shave their heads and dye it pink. <laughs> that, that run the editorial boards of these newspapers. Now, back when we had some real reporting, they would talk about stuff and they would tell us about things like this isn't good, like the Coke machine that would make you hear voices when you walk by. This is buy it, buy it, buy the tooth rods, buy it because you need it. You need it to make you fat and rot your teeth out and give you stains on your teeth and dissolve your bones. Yeah, buy it, right? No, they had Coke machines that would put out a frequency that made you hear things. What do you think they're going to do with this stuff? They're going to make you hear things, see things, and do things. We're all going to become Manchurian candidates if they have their way. If they get us to merge with the machines and take these implants. No! What is wrong with you people? Well, it's for the wealthy people anyway. It's not for us. Well, the wealthy people aren't going to be living it, in these it, kill it's be there. It's going to be the solution for the wealthy when everyone's getting sick. They'll say, hey, you know, take the chip and, you know, become a cyborg, basically, and uh, you'll live forever. And Oh, like in Logan's you, Run, you where you get to live till you're 30, you, and then they come Yeah, you, you could sync up to the, with the Wi-Fi and all of that. Well, I will tell you this. I know this, simple fact, that there are trillions of cells in your body. And every single one of them has been programmed by God Almighty to self-destruct. We all got 100 years and that's it on the face of this earth. And these people are not going to live forever. David Rockefeller had, I don't know how many heart transplants from drinking too much adrenochrome. And he still went to the ground. And the fires of hell aren't hot enough for him. All these people that think they're going to live forever by merging with these machines, they're deluded. You know why? You know who they follow? Well, they follow their boss, the devil. And who is he? He's a liar and a murderer and a thief. From the beginning, it was so. Why are you going to follow a loser? Have you looked at some of these musicians that are satanic? Have you looked how well they've aged? They look like cadavers I mean, with a at, pulse. Look at Mick Jagger, my God. These guys, I don't know what they put in their cornflakes, ladies and gentlemen, but it ain't what you and I put them on. Uh, it's hard living. It, it's hard living. Listen, let me tell you something. I know people that have had hard living. They don't look like that. Yeah, but they're not hard living like Mick Jagger. Well, yeah, Stones. those guys do stuff that uh, yeah. <laughs> we can't talk about on the Internet because, quite frankly, we can't talk about it. But <laughs> let me tell you something, folks. They're all going to die. And so, you know, they think that they've got the solution to hurt us into the compact city kill grid and inject us and irradiate us and poison us while they sit back in a lap of luxury with sex slaves and, and servants and drinking adrenochrome and, and have an organ harvesting going on in the basement in their castles, it's not going to save them, folks. You know why? Because 
there is an equalizer. And this is the only way to solve the salvation problem right here, folks. I want to keep plugging this. You know why? Because your pastor won't talk about this. Your pastor wants you to fall asleep and go home and think about what's for lunch and what's on the football game today and put your money in the plate so he can go back to sleep as soon as he gets home for the next six days. That's right. We're asking some questions here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We want to know why this stuff is happening, and we want to know why it's good for us but not good for the people that are inventing this crap. And I still don't have an answer. And I'm not so sure I'm going to have an answer tonight. But I'm going to get one. I want to know why there's a list of countries that aren't getting 5G when they are the source of this technology. Namely, Israel. I want to know why Israel's not getting 5G for at least seven more years, according to this trade publication. And yet the development has come out of Israel. That's a valid question. And I'm going to keep bringing it up because that's very concerning. You know what that's like? That's like me coming to everybody in my audience and say, I've discovered this wonderful food that grows on a tree. And if you eat this food, it will make all your wrinkles go away. And it will make you lose all this weight. And it will make you look like you're 19 again. And yet I sit up here with a few pounds on my face and the wrinkles all over me and the sunspots from being out in the sun. And saying, well, I won't take it because I just, I'm not going to tell you why I'm not going to take it, but you take it. And not only this, I make a deal with the school district that says everybody that goes to school has to take this fruit in their lunch every day and eat it in front of the teacher or they get sent to the principal's office. So not only do I not take the, the fruit and eat it myself, but I make everybody else eat it. Oh, and then, by the way, I forgot to tell everybody that I know that this fruit makes you sick and it, it causes all kinds of health problems, but we're not going to release any of the studies. Why is Israel not getting 5G, ladies and gentlemen? And why do I have to have one of these things on my light pole in my backyard? And why do you? Why don't you ask the pastor who spends half his time in that pulpit worshiping Israel on Sunday and ask those questions to your pastor and ask him why? Why? Does this concern you? It concerns me, folks, because there we've got the head of the FCC saying this is coming. Whether you like it or not, if it hasn't been tested for health, the health effects on humans, and they're going to put this in, and the people that invented it aren't letting it go into their country. You look me in the eye right now. Go ahead. I dare you. You question what I just asked you to question. Go on, Gary. Go on. Okay. Um, I have a press release from Sprint, and so we're still on Sprint. Sprint wants to merge with T-Mobile to make the to basically create a 5G monopoly. They claim if they uh, merge into a singular company that uh, they will be the world leader in uh, the development and uh, the deployment of 5G. And so here's a press release, uh, a little, not lengthy, but it's going to take a little bit to read this. So it says, uh, Sprint and NXM Labs launch first 5G-ready connected car platform featuring Internet of Things blockchain security. First of its kind connected vehicle technology for new and early model vehicles. Ooh, early model. Does it specify the years? Nope. Well, maybe it does, but I haven't read the whole thing. Um, Sprint has joined NXM Labs to launch a 5G ready connected car platform combining high speed on demand passenger Wi Fi with advanced vehicle health monitoring and safety. This includes the first blockchain-powered Internet of Things security system that guards against hackers. The NXM platform includes a powerful automotive router that keeps people connected on the road and through mobile apps, helping to save money and keep track of vehicle performance and location. Features include maintenance reminders, preventative notifications, scheduling, and booking service appointments. Now, there's a bit more here, but I just want to kind of repeat some of this. So they are now saying that your car needs a Wi-Fi router in the car. And what do you say about metal walls and Wi-Fi routers? And they say that you need this because you need to save money 
keep track of your vehicle performance and keep track of your location. Well, I think already we are able to keep track of the vehicle performance and know the vehicle location. And we know if the car is running like crap or not. We already got all these sensors in the thing that tells us there's a problem if the check engine light goes on. This is another example of them trying to con us into turning our cars into a high-powered microwave oven, folks. And this is another example of them insulting our intelligence, selling us a bill of goods on something that's totally unnecessary. I just discovered something. So I had said at the very beginning of this, because I, I, I have not read through all this. There's so much material. I've only read through some of it. So I said at the very beginning of this that I learned that the new cell phones are coming out in 2019 and that there was a thing in here from AT&T that they, they said quarter two. Well, look what this says, the Sprint press release. It says the company has significantly increased its investment to dramatically improve coverage, reliability, and speed across its nationwide network and launched the first 5G mobile network in the U.S. in the first half of 2019. So that's your quarter two, April to June. So the first cell phones are coming out in the, in the second quarter in the first half of 2019. So we are six months away or less from the first cell phones coming out that are, are going to incorporate the 5G uh, cellular network. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is very important because I want to tell you something. They're putting the cart before the horse. Okay. Normally, the whole thing would come out at the same time. Here's the deal. The 5G cell phones are junk. They're not going to work. They're not going to work for crap. That's why they got to put the stuff in the car with 60 gigahertz to be the end relay because here's the thing. You're going to find out the hard way, and Apple's holding back for a reason. It's not because they want to you know, make everybody wait in anticipation and market share and, and ratchet up the demand. No, they have not perfected a 5G phone that is worth a damn, folks. But they want you to think it's going to be some magical mystery tour. When you push a button, it solves all your problems. It doesn't exist. You see, this technology is garbage for the application they want us to, they want to sell it to us on. A 5G phone is going to be as big as a laptop right now. That's why they don't have them. Because millimeter wave systems are not that efficient. Millimeter wave systems are not that, they, they don't have the utility they want you to believe they do. And so they're dragging their feet. But in the meantime, oh, we got to have the antennas. Well, yeah, because they got to have the weapons grid in before it's too late, before we figure out what it is. Because they can't suppress all this information. But what they can do is con you into thinking that this has to come because all these wonderful things. There isn't a thing he mentioned that interests me. Yeah, why do you need a, a, wireless, need any of this. a wireless router for your car? Well, they said extra high power. Now, there's only one other place I know of that has metal walls and high power access points in it. Is it and Troy that's High a, School? That's a Troy High School. <laughs> And my next door neighbor happens to be a teacher there. He had a brain tumor cut out of the side of his head. And he was the chief, he was the chief advocate for putting wireless into Troy High School. And he actually had a presentation at his house where he had a whole bunch of people come over from the school district. He had a doctor tell everybody how safe wireless is and how wonderful the technology is going to be and how crazy Mr. Embriano is. And yet all these people over at Troy High School were having all kinds of health problems, insomnia, migraines, headaches. All kinds of behavioral issues with those kids. The test scores are dropping like a brick. I mean, the whole place is falling apart. And they want to make it seem like what they've done with these Chromebooks is they've saved humanity. Folks, these people that are pushing this stuff, they're compartmentalized, weaponized idiots. Okay? That's what they are. This stuff is no good. We don't need any of these benefits. But yet they're trying to sell us like it's like like, like it's going to go out of, out of style tomorrow. And if we don't get it now, we'll never get our hands on it. Nothing could be further from the truth. You know what's funny about Goodwill is I find all these uh, brand new things in the box that never got off the ground because nobody ever bought them. And so they were wholesale liquidated and given away as a tax deduction from a corporation to the charity. And so you go in there and you find all these failed inventions that are actually kind of neat. I've got a whole bunch of them. That's what this stuff is, folks. This is a fraud. This whole thing they're trying to sell us is a bill of goods. It has an ulterior motive and another purpose that they don't want us to understand. And we're telling you what that is right now. Go ahead, Gary, continue. All right. So this is a uh, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a press release, but it's some kind of uh, document from a company called Biometric Signature ID. There we go. Surveillance. Biometric. This is for cell phones. 
Biometric signature ID has created the world's only biometric password for identity authentication. Biosig ID reinvents your password by blending amazing biometric technology with the password format users are familiar with. No special hardware or downloads are required. Biosig ID uses just a finger or mouse to draw a unique four-character password. Uh, and then it goes on. Biosig ID is a biometric identity authentication solution uh, that requires no hardware or downloads. It authenticates users by capturing their unique movements as they draw a password with their finger or mouse. It is the most significant password advance since dial-up. So on the new 5G cell phones, if you have a password, instead of putting in four numbers, they're going to have you draw with your with your fingerprint to, to get into your phone. So whatever the company is that, ha that makes the phone, they're going to have your fingerprint stored in the phone so they know <clears throat> who's a... Uh... What a bunch of nonsense. <clears throat> Who needs that? Everybody has a password. And if you lose your phone, guess what you do? You erase it, lock it, end <clears throat> of discussion. Why do you have to have... Let me ask you a question. Why do you have to have a, a Rolls Royce in the driveway to walk to the 7-Eleven a half a block away from your house? What are they doing here, folks? What in the world is going on? Now, of course, the 5G system is going to use the LED lights and, and all of the systems that have speakers and microphones to listen and observe and everything else. But th don't you see that what they're telling us is for our benefit and our consumption? I'm going to say it's a bunch of bullshit, okay? We don't need all this technological advancement. Now, okay, so it's going to figure out the pattern and develop an algorithm on how you trace. What happens if you've had a few beers when you did it? Is it going to forget that you did the squiggly the opposite direction? I mean, what if you didn't take your Prozac? And you're on edge. Or what if you had 10 cups of coffee and you're a little nervous? This is a joke. And if you're driving on the road and you want your wife to get into your phone to make a phone call to yeah, somebody, she can't, she, can't, she can't do it. That's right. So you know what that's going to do, right? They're going to start cutting people's hands off for their phones. Because after all, that's what they do in Central America for your watch, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to a nation near you. What else you got there, pal? All right. So uh, this is GSMA. We talked about them earlier. And uh, this is exactly uh, how I presented this earlier. It says, Innovation City 2018, the fusion of 5G, artificial intelligence, and Internet of Things. Intelligent connectivity. GSMA Innovation City presents an immersive showcase of the latest innovations in mobile with a particular focus on intelligent connectivity. Solutions which benefit from a combination of the 5G era family of mobile networks, smart platforms with artificial intelligence, and data from multiple Internet of Things devices. Discover how these technologies will impact almost every aspect of our lives, including entertainment, transportation, public services, industry, environmental sustainability, we go. and of course, web and cloud connectivity. So my takeaway from that is, as I've been saying this whole time, this is all encompassing. Yep. All, every aspect of your life, the internet of things, it's about having everything on the internet, everything. When you go outside, every device will be hooked up to the internet, synced up with the Wi-Fi system. So... It's the all-seeing eye. That's exactly what it is. You got a dollar bill, turn it over and look at the all-seeing eye on the top of that Illuminati pyramid. You want to see the all-seeing eye in the crystal ball? Look at the the, the, the prince of uh, Saudi Arabia hanging out with Donald Trump with their hands on the crystal ball together, folks. It's out there. It's out there. I cannot begin to tell you, folks, how much trouble we're in as a species because they've got everything. You know... You pay your taxes and you see them building another building at the college and you think, oh, that's school bond money. That's wonderful. Oh, you know, my kid's got a scholarship to Harvard. Or, you know, he's going to Berkeley or whatever. And, you, you know, you got these brilliant kids with 180 IQs and you're proud parents because they're going to work for Google. Do you have any idea that they're all building the prison and they're using the hard work and the money that you sweat for and work so hard for to send your kids to school to work for the enemy? Ladies and gentlemen, we're at the end of the line when it comes to 
the weapons deployment. They're almost they're almost in a position to put everything in place. They won't need much after this. They won't need to fire a shot. Because they've already got everybody addicted to screens, and video games, and movies, and games. I live in Fullerton, California. When I go for walks during the day, you'd think somebody dropped a nuclear bomb or this place was Fukushima because nobody's outside and it's 75 degrees. <clears throat> the sky is bright blue and the birds are flying around. And I walk through these neighborhoods and I take my phone out and I pick up literally four Wi-Fi signals from every house. God help us. And nobody's outside riding their bikes. Nobody's outside talking to each other. When I was a kid, we were all outside checking out the girls, driving around, picking fruit off of trees in people's front yards, saying, hi, Mr. Smith. Hi, Mr. Jones. I'm talking to the old senior citizens. I knew everybody in Garden Grove where I grew up for several blocks over. I knew everybody on first name basis. It was wonderful to be alive back then. Now it's a nightmare because the academic pressures to become part of this machine, to invent the weaponry as such. You've got to go to school at, at uh, seven o'clock in the morning and be there till four o'clock in the afternoon. Then you got to come home and do homework till one in the morning. And then on Saturdays, you got to go to the learning center to make sure your SAT score is perfect. So you can get into one of these schools to learn how to make the weapons to kill everybody with and get paid $120,000 a year so you can live in one of these apartments and get irradiated from above you, below you, and behind every stinking wall and drive around in one of those cars that's cooking your gonads with the white projector beam lights that's disrupting your melatonin levels. And you go home to that 50-foot blue Grillo TV set and you think you're brilliant because you just made a, a couple of bucks and the food's coming out of the microwave in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, do you realize what they've done to you? Do you realize what has happened to us? You know, when I was a kid, I could tell the changing of the seasons by when the apricot tree and the peach tree would blossom. And I could tell when spring was in the air, when the birds made their nests in the evergreen tree. And I could tell when summer was coming, when I went down to the pier and the sardines moved in and the anchovies moved out. And I could tell you when summer was ending, when the bonita were heading south off the end of the pier instead of coming north. And I could tell you when winter was coming when the mackerel stopped biting and the jack smelt moved in. And I could tell you when winter was about over when the mackerel came back. Folks, I know what it's like to be alive because I lived and I lived as a human being and I looked at the pretty girls riding their bikes and I was down at the beach when the girls were wearing their dolphin shorts and their rollerblades and the Dukes of Hazard daisy shorts were everywhere when I was 13 years old. Why do you think I'm so happy? Because I lived a good life. And what do you got now? You got a bunch of chicks that are chowing down on a bunch of stuff that's making them blow up like a balloon. They're sucking on these Frappuccino caramel yakis with a bunch of donuts and they're miserable and they're posting fake pictures of themselves on social media and nobody goes outside and the guys aren't out at the mall looking for the girls. You know who's at the mall right now? The women who are married to these executives of these companies buying a bunch of purses they don't need and cosmetics that are doing nothing for these wrinkles. We're in deep. We're in deep. You've got to get to your kids and you've got to tell them the truth about what this stuff is doing. And I want to tell you something. If your children are into virtual reality, you've lost your children. Okay? That's the line you can't let your children cross. These video games are bad enough. This 5G is only going to make it all that much worse. When you put a VR headset on your head, you see these veins? Okay, look at this. There's never been a needle in this arm. Because I know that once you put a needle in this arm, you never come back. The Beatles had the number one selling song of all time called Hey Jude. It was about heroin, folks. And virtual reality is digital crack. And this stuff is going to make digital crack on steroids. That's just one component of all this. There are many. And you know what? We're going on almost two hours, Gary. This is quite a show tonight. And we've still got a good audience tuned in. I want to thank you all for watching this. This is a very important broadcast, folks. And this man has done his homework. This is Gary Galeno from Grind All 61 YouTube. And I'm Joe Briano, the Fullerton Informer. I run the FullertonInformer.com and WiFiDangers.com. And I run the Fullerton Informer YouTube channel that you're watching right now. Tell your friends to subscribe and tune in to both of our channels as we bring you more information as it becomes available to us. And you're not going to hear this information from the gatekeepers or the shills out there that are putting a spin on the truth and you will know a tree by its fruit and those that don't deal with Jesus Christ, you've got a question. And if you don't like this license plate frame, then don't put one on your car, okay? That's a fact. 
Gary, what else you got? All right. Well, really, this is all our fault because it says here the U.S. is at the forefront of the global smart home market. Smart hubs, speakers are increasingly the control the control platform of choice. 16% of U.S. households own at least one smart home device in any of the three use cases from our survey. Um, it says um, smart hubs, such as smart speakers, are taking control of the connected home, driving unprecedented growth in the smart home market. 35% of U.S. households with at least one smart home device also own a smart speaker. Smart speakers are also already common in South Korea and the UK. So I'm going to stop you there for a second. South Korea has the highest autism rate in the world, ladies and gentlemen. It's approaching 50% of boys. Thank you, Samsung. And to all you Koreans out there who worship all your technology, look what it's done. It has turned on you and it has destroyed your nation. It has destroyed your people. Go ahead, Gary. The correlation between ownership of smart <laughs> hub speakers and smart devices across multiple use cases suggest that smart hubs are increasingly the control platform of choice for connected homes. So smart speakers are the Alexa and the Echo and all of that crap. And what and those are just telescreens from 1984 that are hooked up into your house that transmit all all of what's going on in your home back and to listen back to everything to, you say back to Jeff Bezos. Because apparently he wants to know what all of us are doing. Well, he's another CIA operative who's been given a position to where he has access to the algorithm development. And he hands it all over to the NSA and DARPA so they can reverse engineer everything against us. That's exactly what's going on. Bezos, Bozos, whatever your name is, pal, give it up. And uh, we talked about the uh, director general of GSMA, uh, Matt Grainer, at the beginning of this. And I want to read you another quote. He says, I have often said that a connected society is a happy society. And in the era of intelligent connectivity, the ways we can positively impact society are truly endless. Okay, that's true. Repeat that sentence. The ways we can positively impact society are truly endless. That's is that what he said? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what he said. Okay, the ways they can truly Im positively impact society. Now, it's all the frame of reference here. If you're a eugenicist elitist, how do you positively impact society? Well, you control everybody, you kill them off. That's exactly what this technology gives these people the ability to do. These people are like telling it like it is, but in their language, they're up on this level to where they know that we won't understand their Orwellian doublespeak and their code words and their hidden meanings behind everything, but they mean business. These people are drunk on technology. And they think they're uh, these, these technocrats that have discovered the, the, the keys to human happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, the keys to human happiness are relationships. First one with God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the personal relationships we have with each other. You cannot substitute the friendship and the personal contact of human beings. We were made to be connected to each other in person. And while you may enjoy watching me, you don't sit here all by yourself and stare at this thing all day because that doesn't make you happy. You have a need to go hang out with your friends. You have a need to go hang out, look at pretty girls. You have a need to go out, if you're a teenager, to, to show off to the young ladies about what a cool guy you are. And if you're a young girl, you want to show off to the guys how pretty you are. I mean, that's just humanity. What they've done is they've got everybody looking in a box, putting fake stuff up, and nobody's happy because everybody knows everybody's lying. It, it kind of reminds me back when uh, this is before the internet, but you know they used to have like these dating these dating things. You could call these phone numbers, and you know you, you get the girl exchange. And then they, oh yeah, well yeah, I'm I'm five three, and I have blonde hair and blue eyes, and you know 34, 24, 34, whatever. And then you meet them, and it's like oh my gosh, who are you? Yeah, it's the same thing today. You know, it's like nobody's honest about who they are or what they're all about. But back in the old days when everybody just used to hang out, what you see is what you get. And that's how it should be, folks. We need to stop having such an addiction. You know, I live next to all these colleges and I'm driving to work, or I'm driving around and I see all these college kids walking across the street and they're like this. OK, you see, this is what they're as they pass each other. Now, when I was in college, I'm like, oh, that's a nice skirt you got on there. Oh, you look beautiful today. I love that crimped hair. You know, or hey, Bill, how you doing? How, how was the polo meet? You know, 
nobody talks to each other anymore because this is in their face. Or should I do should I do that? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what everybody looks like. Can you see me? This is the typical college student high school kid today, folks. This is it right here. You know what? Screw that. Screw that. You know what? I used to love going to school. You want to know why? And it wasn't for the academics. It was for the fringe benefits, ladies and gentlemen. And these kids are missing all that. You know what? You need to get back. All you got to do is when you're standing in line at the grocery store, talk to somebody. You know, you may be the only person that said hi to them all week. Do you know that? Just look up and say, how's your day going? You know? Oh, that's... That's a, you know, I tried. Those are delicious. Just talk to me. Folks, people need contact. People need to be loved. In Jesus' name, folks, stop the dehumanization. And don't let them weaponize everything. That's what they're doing. Don't let them win. Because they can't. They've been trying to, they've been trying to run humanity into the ground for thousands of years. You know, we're still here talking. And we're still here worshiping God and praising the name of the Savior. They can't stop this. They blow churches up, bulldoze churches over in China. They put people... In, in these communes in Texas, they firebomb them and hit them with machine guns, and then CNN says how evil they were and how they were raping kids. Look, folks, they can't kill the truth. They tried to nail the truth through the cross 2,000 years ago. Look what happened. It backfired on them, didn't it? You can't kill the truth. And God is all-powerful, and the devil will never be able to take his place, no matter how many times he's had conversations with Alice Cooper or Led Zeppelin or Mick Jagger or uh, Smashing Pumpkins, or Bob Dylan, or all these people that, you know, have signed a pact with Satan himself. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, folks. I mean, you can ask Eddie Van Halen how running with the devil worked out for him. Or you can ask the guys from ACDC, Antichrist, Devil's Child, how the highway to hell led them to happiness. Or you can ask Ace Freely from Knights in Satan Service about how Flaming Youth set the world on fire from his Destroyer album made him feel happy because they don't have an answer, folks. Let me tell you what the answer is. The answer is the truth of Jesus Christ, of love, of human interaction, and courage and wisdom that is found in God's word, the Holy Bible, and spreading the word and sharing it with others, and not letting us become ensnared in the matrix of this satanic technocracy that they're trying to ram down our throats as they aim these weapons at us from every direction. All you got to do is say no, don't bring this crap into your house. And look your friends in the eyes and say, how you been? How you doing? How's things going for you? Your fellow human beings right now, they may be in the middle of a classroom. They'd be in the workplace. And you know, some of those people are the loneliest people you've ever met. And they're surrounded by tons of people. You know what? That's because this has happened to everybody. Okay? And this ought not be, folks. That's what they want. Because let me tell you the one thing, the one thing that was the most incredible thing in my entire life, and that was falling in love. And for those of you out there who truly experienced it, and I do believe this is something that was meant for every one of us, and the satanic injection of media and all this nonsense has taken it away from a lot of people. That feeling of falling in love was magical. It was unbelievable. I can't even explain it, folks. And this is destroying it because you want to know something? There's nothing like looking into somebody's eyes that you're in love with when you're in love. And guess what happens when you have this going all the time? Hmm. You can't see it. I'm not going to say anything else tonight. I'm going to let you finish this up, Gary, because I've said enough. And, uh, you know, I've well, pretty much had it with uh, – You might want to say something else. I made another discovery. All right. Well, all right. Uh, encore for Gary here. This is a long broadcast. Go ahead. There's a I, I, there's a paid advertisement in here that was paid for by a very nefarious entity. Let me guess. Apple or Disney? Oh, DARPA's in there. Oh, that there you go. What's the ad for? Uh, it's uh, a contest for Spectrum Collaboration, the Spectrum Collaboration Challenge, the world's first collaborative machine intelligence competition to overcome spectrum scarcity. So they want to, they want to, um, I'm losing my mind right now. <laughs> yeah. They want to uh, machine intelligence, you know, like the algorithms and all that stuff that they're using on the social media. And okay. This is a spectrum collaboration challenge. The world's first collaborative machine intelligence competition to overcome spectrum scarcity. So 
Artificially intelligent radio systems compete in a live public event for $3.75 million in prize money. All right, now this is from the, uh, this is going to be awarded at the Mobile World Congress Americas 2019. It was just going to be in Austin, DARPA, okay. So they're trying to figure out, you know, they already know that when they hook everything up to this, that there's going to be so much data that even with the millimeter wave and the short distance backhole, tremendous advances in the technology, in the communication systems, folks, there's still going to be a scarcity, okay? There's still going to be a scarcity in spectrum because they're going to load up the airwaves once again. So DARPA is already trying to get out in front of the traffic jams that are going to be caused by the Internet of Things because they want to make sure that the flow of information is never impeded. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to throw $3.75 measly million dollars at this problem when, in fact, this is one of those unintended consequence problems that they already anticipate being a problem. And they're getting it out. They're getting the answer to this problem really cheap right now. So they got a bunch of physics professors and a bunch of kids with 180 IQs, 190 IQs that are into quantum computing and all this stuff to figure out ways around these bottlenecks of spectrum of all this information from the Internet of Things and the, and the information superhighway that's going to look like Manhattan at rush hour on the 4th of July after the fireworks show. Here's the deal, folks. Never going to be enough for them. They're never going to be satisfied knowing everything about us. You want to know something they'll never know? They'll never know what it is to be happy, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, that feeling of falling in love. You remember rock set from the 80s? Cute little really skinny blonde gal. It's a song about must have been love. She's singing about love. It's where the wind goes. Do you ever think about where the wind goes, folks, when it blows? Where does it go? It's where the rivers flow. They don't know what love is, folks. That's why they're so into these machines and into this technology. Because they've abandoned humanity and the companionship of other people. And they've been given over to the worship of inanimate objects. Woe to those who worship the creation instead of the creator. This is demonic. This is satanic. We know this is occultic. We know this is all part of Satan's plan to replace God with him and to replace us with these machines. And it ain't going to work. Because I, I got news for you. No matter how they try to turn all the men into women and turn the women into men and turn us into these things that want to meld with these machines, you know what? I still see couples holding hands. I still see girls looking in the guy's eyes at the high school when I'm driving by. I can still see them looking at each other. They'll never stop that because God gave it to us. You want to know something? Don't you let them. And you fight this with every ounce of your being because you want to know something? There are children that have not been born that are eggs in your daughter's bodies that are going to be princesses someday looking for Prince Charming. They're going to have grandchildren. They're going to grow old and they're going to be in a coffin and they're going to go to heaven and they're going to have a funeral. People are going to be surrounding them. Their grandchildren are going to be there looking at them because it's going to go on, folks. Life's going to go on. These people, they want you to become a genetic dead end committing suicide because Satan wants to take you with him. And you know what I got for the devil? I can't do it on air, folks. <laughs> but I will tell you this. Jesus saves. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And none of this garbage is going to make anything happy or anyone happy. It may make some people a little bit of money, and it may lower the population of the face of the earth for a short period of time. But I want to tell you something. They'll never win. You know why? Because the only person that's walked out of the tomb, they tried to nail the truth to the cross 2,000 years ago, and he, he walked out of that tomb with those holes in his hands and his holes in his feet. He came back and he told it like it was. And he ain't finished because he's commissioned us to carry on where he left off. And he left us with the Holy Spirit, the source of all wisdom and all comfort and all courage. And I pray in Jesus' name, you will ask for it. You know, Solomon was the richest man who ever lived. He had, I don't know how many hundreds of uh, uh, thousands of acres and gold and, and women and everything else. And you know what he asked God for? He prayed for wisdom. You don't get wisdom from college. You don't get wisdom from going to school. You don't get wisdom from reading magazines. You think these people have wisdom? These people are a bunch of idiots. Okay? They're 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 in a cubicle, you know, making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year inventing weaponry. You think that's wisdom? That's stupidity. Wisdom comes from God, it comes from above. And wisdom has fruits, happiness, and beauty and love. Not this not you know what? None of these people look happy. They all look like uh, I sing the body electric, the mannequins from the Twilight Zone episode. None of these people look human. Okay, none of them do. 
They're all a bunch of cyborgs who are given over to this creepy technology. I like electricity, folks. You know why? I'll be honest with you. I like a cold piece of smoked salmon in the morning. I like the, the taste of a chilled grape. I like ice in my apple cider vinegar drink in the morning, okay? I appreciate electricity, but I certainly don't like an electric chair. Choose your poison, ladies and gentlemen, and choose it wisely. And don't let them have their way with you. Gary? I'm done. I, uh, I'm ready to shut down. All right, folks. We've gone well over two hours. I strongly suggest this video. Download this video and share it and make a copy of it. And if you're going to put it up on other channels, please give credit back to the Fullerton Informer and link the source in your subtitle or in your comments. Please get the word out. And in Jesus' name, we're going to win. You know why? Because he already did. Good night, folks, and thanks for tuning in tonight.